So I'm a father of one. I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Scott Jason with Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW's TV show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by FlintHillsAuto.com. I am Tim Fitzgerald of GoPowerCat.com, and the man to my right is Scott Chasen of Fog.net. And Scott, I'd just like to point out that K-State uh, won two games in a row for the first time since November, and they <laughs> shut down college basketball. That is, that, I think, a they direct correlation there. And, mm-hmm. and also, hey, Kansas State was not eliminated from the Big 12 or NCAA tournaments when the season ended. Usually, if your last game of the season is a win, bodes pretty well for your program. I know, and it didn't used to be that way, but we'll get into that <laughs> later. You can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show on Twitter at the drive 13. And of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions over at the drive show.com. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of the drive, you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of the podcast of a podcast at GoPowerCat and fog.net. And of course this will be because there's no more sports, <laughs> our last show of the year. And we'll start things off with our two-minute drill. The two-minute drill is uh, sponsored by Hula Hands. They've been expecting you. Now, let's eat. Well, Scott, as we all know, there will be no NCAA tournament this year. Wah, wah. You were there as the Jayhawks left their hotel in Kansas City. I'm not saying that's a little odd, but it's okay. <laughs> to return back to Lawrence, did you get a sense of the mood around the program? Yeah, look, it's a very different time just I mean being at the Big 12 tournament first of all on Thursday when you know Texas and Texas Tech were getting ready to warm up and uh, you know there are no fans you you see some of the pictures that I sent over this is just the the Kansas team leaving the bus and uh, you know it was it it was a really odd scene it it looked like it 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 looked like you know people were waiting on something you know I watched uh, Bob Huggins stroll down from his hotel room into the lobby into uh, kind of like the bar waiting area type deal and and like it was <clears throat> packed with these fans and people who uh, you know would love nothing more than to just head head on down to Sprint Center basically and, and check out some games but uh, obviously that's not the state of the things right now you know uh, when I watched Devon Dotson leave the hotel get on the bus and go back to Lawrence and I should mention we weren't even able to talk to these people because they were told, hey, you need to keep space from everyone, not just media, not just fans. Like, you need to, you know, have this wall of separation, basically. You know, Dotson was just kind of lightly banging, you know, this, like, uh, I don't know, paper tube of some kind. It was giant, you know, just against his head. It looked like maybe a poster would have been in there or, you know, just something. I, I don't know what. And, you know, you could, the, the mood was just, it was so quiet and, you know, the opposite of what you'd expect. And, and at this point, the NCAA tournament hadn't even been canceled. You know, it was a bummer that the Big 12 tournament wasn't going to be played, especially for a guy like Yudoka Asabuki, who stayed four years. He never played a minute in the Big 12 tournament, and he only got to play in one NCAA tournament. But uh, you just sense that uh, there was shock, I would say, more than anything. Because even when you're sad, when you're angry, there, there are usually words that come with those emotions. In this case, it was just quiet. It was eerie. You know, Bill Self walked by, said, how's it going, guys? And then, you know, even he is as chatty as he can be, you know, right onto the bus. And, you know, we haven't really heard from those guys since because that's the state of sports right now. No one really knows what's going on. I've also talked to recruits who are pretty much stunned that not only their high schools, their high school competition have been canceled, but also just the NCAA tournament and and really being surprised. It, It seemed like that was such a fixture. And for that to go away, I mean, that that shakes some people up. It's absolutely incredible what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, well, Fitz, Kansas State won its game with TCU in the first round of the Big 12 tournament prior to the rest of the event being canceled. That means the Wildcats, like you mentioned, won their last two games of the season. So is that a bright spot in in a gloomy season, a gloomy gloomy end to the season, too? I don't know, man. You know, it is nice. It's better than... 
than losing. To, oh, but you basketball know. highlights. By uh, the way. Look, these are basketball highlights. I don't know if you folks are familiar with this sport. Um, K-State played pretty well against TCU. They played outstanding against an Iowa State team that in the other first round game really pushed Oklahoma State to the limit. A great finish in that game. This was the last Big 12 game of the season. <clears throat> you know, as we left the arena that night, games were on for Thursday. Crowds would not be able to attend. And then, you know, by Thursday at 11 o'clock, the games were all canceled before they even started play. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nice, K-State won. And it is the first time K-State ended its season on a victory since 1971 because kids there used to be a time when there was no postseason tournament the big eight played a holiday tournament and so you would end the regular season and then teams would get picked for the ncaa tournament and the field was smaller so you could have been a pretty good team not good enough to make the field won your last game uh, and that was the end of your season so that's uh, been a long time i think that was jack hartman's first season at kansas state so it's really kind of strange for an entire generation or two of basketball fans that a team was able to end the season on a victory. This is really, really strange. I feel horrible for the kids, mm -hmm. particularly the seniors, uh, on those teams that were advancing with hopes of, of playing. Uh, and there was briefly talk about maybe granting seniors a waiver to come back. We'll get into that a little bit more for spring sports. That will happen. Basketball, though, it's just over. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe they will take it case by case. I don't know. I doubt anyone will get eligibility. And then again, Scott, I just kind of pause and wonder how many players would actually come back. Mm -hmm. You played an entire season. Yeah. K-State had three seniors. I'm not sure any of them would come back, even if they were awarded that season. Yeah, it, it's just so tricky. Certainly in Kansas's case, Devon Dotson is almost certainly off to the NBA. Yudoka Azubuki, kind of a similar yeah. deal. He might be a first-round pick now, which is crazy to think about his journey. Maybe a guy like Isaiah Moss, but even he was working an internship over the summer and was late getting on campus. He's, he's got a life, whether it's basketball, whether it's something else, you know, to get to as well. Yep, very good. Well, here's the big question. Do you think the NCAA was right to cancel the tournament rather than postponing? Well, I've heard a lot of talk. I've listened to what people had to say and, and taken in, you know, other opinions. And where I kind of lay on this is yes. And I understand the people uh, who wanted this tournament pushed back and said, hey, why rush? Let's reevaluate in a month. Let's reevaluate in two months. But I think there were a couple of incidents that really shook people up. And I think the first was Rudy Gobert. Yeah. And when uh, he had that positive test, obviously the situation where uh, he was, you know, touching reporters. Uh, Being playful because he had no yeah. idea he had it. And, and, and that, that just kind of showed you it was playful. And I think it wasn't meant to be mean, but it, it showed you how easily, you know, this situation situation can turn scary and uh, you know you wouldn't want to be in a scenario where let's say you restart it with only a few teams then someone tests positive you've just spent all this time booking these arenas and yeah. stadiums a second time you know this is going to be extremely expensive planning it out with tv uh, and again you're consulting with you know medical professionals and all these things and look if this gets pushed back to may you can't do it because so many guys will be gone who will be you know preparing for the nba and whatnot so I, I, you're talking about a very short window with a lot of logistical hurdles, yeah. and then one thing goes wrong and you have to cancel the whole thing. I, I don't think they I, that. I was a fan of just you know delaying that decision for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I think they could have done that because there was discussion of playing a 16-team tournament, mm -hmm. and I, I thought that's kind of a unique way to go about it, but it also immediately advances all the top seeds, basically, yeah. um, and steals a little of the fun of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, yeah. I think they maybe could have delayed a couple of weeks, see if this outbreak ever really spreads like it did in Italy, and then maybe meet up and, you know, there's places like Disney World that have giant sure. facilities where mm -hmm. you can play all the games at once. It's going to be on TV. There's going to be no crowds. They could have yeah. done that. But, Scott, you're right. There's just too many moving parts. Yeah. Too many guys. What if one star player says, I'm not doing it? Yeah, and, and the testing issue, too. Right now, we're trying to just get enough tests for everybody, let alone, I mean, you have to test every player, every, you know, personnel, you know, staff member, every security guard. I, you know this. You interact with so many people just going into an arena to, to start to play a game, and, and it, it's really hard to control all the variables. Yep, and once a player from the NBA tests positive, mm -hmm. he's on the court ready to play. He's interacted with a lot of people, and they realize he is positive. That changed everything. Yeah. That changed everything. Because mm -hmm. if you watch the game of basketball, and I noticed this the first night, I walked into Sprint Center, there's a crowd, and I'm like, there's a lot of people in here, but you know what? The people most 
most likely to get this are the players. They're banging into each yeah. other. They're spitting, you know, they sweat and mm-hmm. coughing. And that's a pretty good way to get it, even though they're young and healthy. Yeah. But maybe pass it on to other people. Yeah. Now, a quick look at your poll question results. And poll questions are brought to you by Film at 11. Your go fast, look good, play hard, custom shop. Well, last week's question was, will the Big 12 get two number one seeds, Kansas and Baylor, in the NCAA tournament? And if you said no, you were actually in a roundabout way correct. Uh, Amazing. That that was 40% of the vote. Uh, Yes, 60% of the vote. I think you yes people would have been correct if the tournament had extended a little further. I agree, unless Kansas State had beaten Baylor, Mm. which I think is clear was going to happen in that (laughs) way they called off the season. This week's question is this, and you can vote. We're not going to have another show. The Kansas Jayhawks were the unanimous number one in the AP poll entering last week. Should they be named the 2020 national champions? Your choices are A, yes for KU fans, B, no for K-State fans. (laughs) And vote over at thedriveshow.com because I'm curious how weird this poll is. Well, curious how many Kansas and Kansas State fans listen or or watch. But, uh, well, that will do it for this half of the two-minute drill. But we will be right back with more on KU and K-State on The Drive. Diets and workouts, you've done the work. So why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor-designed program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. Welcome back to The Drive as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. The two-minute drill is sponsored by Hula Hands. They've been expecting you. Now let's eat. It isn't just men's basketball that is being put on hold with the coronavirus. Every sport is shutting down. Scott, let's shift over to football. Mm -hmm. How much will this affect when Les Miles and company uh, what they're attempting to do in year number two or three? Two. Two. Two, two. technically. Three counting. Uh, the yeah, and then, you know, yeah. we'll call it two. Yeah. Season two. I'm glad I'm we lost. got to the bottom of this. But, uh, no, I, I, look, I actually think it's a bit of a challenge. And it, it's going to be a challenge for, you know, every team everywhere. And we don't know the state of spring football. At yeah, this it's point. not called off yet. Yeah. All we know is that basically until March 29th, the Big 12 said, no one can practice. Even sports that are in season, out of season, uh, recruiting is off other than basically phone calls and direct messages. Uh, so uh, it, it's a challenge for a lot of teams. The challenge for Kansas is a little bit different, though, because uh, you'll recall Kansas was basically on three offensive coordinators in Les Miles' first year. They brought in Chip Lindsey. He lasted about a month till he got a head coaching opportunity. Uh, then it went to Les Kenning, who uh, took over for a few weeks, actually halfway through the season, six weeks. Uh, and then he was replaced by Brent Deerman. And when Brent Deerman took over, the KU offense, you saw its production increase, and then you saw it kind of plateau and hit a wall where it was to the point that, you know, you can only do so much with a bye week or two, right. and, and when you're trying to install, you know, basically a third offense. And uh, they, if there is no spring football, you know, it may get pushed back to summer, it, it may, you know, we it remains to be seen what will happen. We don't know at this point, but that would be a tough loss for Brent Dearman and company not to be able to go through this full install He's very hands-on, especially with his quarterbacks, and kind of explain, you know, piece by piece, hey, here are how things are going to work. These are the reads we want you to make, especially because Kansas's quarterback con- uh, conversation competition at this point is really down to Thomas McVitie, Miles Kendrick at the moment, and neither one of these guys were Brent Deerman guys, quote-unquote, because, you know, when he was on board, they were both already there. Chip Lindsey, uh, obviously kind of the biggest factor in bringing in Thomas McVitie. That was two offensive coordinators ago. Wow. So th- there are challenges there uh, that, again, every team, you know, that's not unique to Kansas, but when you're trying to implement a new system, it really helps to have a full spring football install. They don't know if they're going to get that. That's amazing. Well, Fitch, you already discussed uh, K-State, K-State spring football in an earlier show, but how does this postponement or potential cancellation impact Kansas State sports as a whole? Yeah, well, everyone, now if you're a spring sport, you've lost your entire mm-hmm. season. you got to play a little bit of baseball. Uh, sadly, Kansas State's baseball season was off to a promising start, and they had one of the best pitching staffs that they've had in modern history. And now all of a sudden it's all shut down. 
all of those seniors will have the ability to get a scholarship for next season. What remains unclear to me is what happens in these sports with scholarship counts. Baseball already only gets 11.7 scholarships, which is an absurd number to start with. Anytime you put a fraction in, it's just bizarre, when in reality they should have 20. They should have 20 scholarships and not have to divvy up so many scholarships. I mean, players get a quarter scholarship, a half scholarship, and once in a while, if you're really good, you get a full scholarship. Does that change? Because if it doesn't change, bringing all the seniors back, it becomes very unfair to the graduating high school seniors now who have fewer athletic opportunities. This is all just such a bizarre, mm -hmm. intertwined mess that we've got to figure out everything going on here, Scott. <clears throat> on the football front for Kansas State, you know, it's a little bit less severe than it is at Kansas with the new offense, but <clears throat> you also have a new off our defensive coordinator at Kansas State mm -hmm. in Joe Klanderman, although he'll probably run the same system. Uh, spring football is so valuable to the coaching staff and the players. They will find a way to do something, and it may not include contact. Mm -hmm. It might not include much interpersonal contact. Uh, players are going to be working out at home. Players aren't even on campus right now mm -hmm. because school isn't on campus, mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting way to do it. Now you've just scattered the children everywhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, the kids are just everywhere instead of in one central place. And, and uh, it's not like they just went away. You know, <laughs> yeah. they just aren't in our town. And, and okay, fine, that's best for us, but it's just the whole thing. It's just there's so many moving parts here and so many decisions that had to be made so quickly. Yeah, that, that's the big takeaway if you think about it. It's that so much of this came about very quickly, and to your point, Fitz, uh, think about this. When, when you talk about bowl practices, when you make a bowl game and you get those couple extra practices, or uh, even take the NBA, what people say about a playoff series and just how one series can uh, create you know, all sorts of development for young players because it's a new atmosphere and a new situation that you're seldom in uh, in leagues. I mean, that's the value of such the, those very limited things. Spring football is a very big deal, and obviously that, of course, extends to other sports, too, that are losing their entire seasons, yeah. obviously not just football. I'll be curious to see if instead of spring football, they don't allocate a few extra practices, five, ten in the fall, Yeah. if this is all cleared up by then. Because right now I think everyone's planning on football season going forward because mm -hmm. as much as we love basketball, if you interrupt football season in the United States, it's, it means it's really bad. Yeah. And if you have to, you have to, but mm -hmm. it's... Everyone's rooting for this to burn out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Now let's step out of bounds. If not, you know, we've already been there. <laughs> yeah, well, almost all sports have been put on hold as uh, fears of spreading the virus reach all corners of our lives. Fitz, explain to the people, why, why is this so important? Yeah. yeah, you know, there's a lot of young, healthy people out mm -hmm. there, Scott, that are just out living their lives. And i got to be honest, I was talking to someone, uh, tweeting with them today. I would probably be doing the same. Because I, I don't think of the connections, but I read a really good tweet from someone that said, young people, act like you have it. Just act like you have it and think about it that way. You're infected, you feel healthy, because that's the sneaky part about mm -hmm. this, is you have an incubation period that's two to 14 days. You might have it, might be walking around, feel healthy, and you're giving it to everyone. And that's why it's really hard to trace the origins of it. But you might just casually have an interaction with someone like me, and God bless you for being healthy and young and fighting it off. I have stage four cancer. And you might give it to me without even knowing that you have it, and you might give it to an older person. If you look at the death rate in Italy, average age of death is 81. It's cleaning out a whole older generation mm -hmm. um, because people simply were infecting them. And it might be from church or it might be from younger relatives mm -hmm. interacting with them. Act like you have it approach people like you have it, and then we'll knock down the spread of it. Yeah, and, and just to go along that point, because I totally agree, you know, something to consider is uh, just this idea that, you know, through no one's fault, our country and, and many countries can't deal with every single person getting sick at the same time. It's a very scary proposition. I know people in the healthcare field. Uh, my girlfriend actually works in a hospital, and it's a situation where y you just don't have enough beds. You don't have enough supplies. You don't have enough everything. So just by, you know, following these simple kind of, you know, staying, maybe not completely isolating yourself, but staying back, acting responsibly, you know, we can slow 
slow this thing down collectively yeah. and, and just help out everyone in the long run. I, I know it's a scary time for a lot of people, but it's an important time for a lot of people. Uh, for the record, this part of the reason why this is the last show is I'm going into isolation. Mm -hmm. I have an oncology visit Monday that was previously scheduled in Kansas City. I'm going to get orders from them and I'm going to go into lockdown. And we thought about doing another show, but mm -hmm. it would have been without me. And so why hold it? <laughs> I mean, really, what's the purpose of holding the show? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would just be him. Yeah. It would be the chase. He, he doesn't affair. know we're, we're doing this behind yeah. his back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now let's hear from the fans. And our, our fan question this week is, okay, fellas, give me a quick prediction about how many football games K-State and KU will win next season. That is from Dennis in Topeka. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I'm going to go with eight. I'm going to say K-State's going to replicate what they did oh, this season. I thought you were saying Kansas for eight games. You kind of... I don't know what to say about Kansas. <laughs> I'm going to let you decide on Kansas. Uh, two or three doesn't sound like a great number if you're a Kansas fan, and they won three games last year, but you got to remember, this is... In college football, it's never a one-year deal. You don't just bring in a bunch of freshmen and, okay, problem solved, everything's fixed. Two or three seems very reasonable uh, an expectation for Yeah, you have to be patient if you're a yeah. Kansas fan. you got to give them time to build those numbers back up. Yeah. Well, remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. And when we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Welcome back as we head down the helm stretch of this week's show and this season. This is it. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to look at our predictions. The predictions are brought to you by Vanderbilt, your work boot center. And remember to make your weekly predictions over at thedriveshow.com next year. Let's look at last week's results. That's kind of horrible. We only got one game in, <laughs> yeah. K-State. So those are the final standings. The fans won. We'll ship green jackets to all seven of you that watch the show. <laughs> That's how it works. The viewers went one and zero. I went one and zero. Scott didn't have faith in K State. It was a tough year. It was a tough. It was tough. You you rallied though. I, rallied. I mean, you you were down and then. That's the way my life is. <laughs> now it's time for our on the clock segment. On the clock is sponsored by Carpet One by Local for a Strong Local Community. And here is Scott chasing the fog .net. You know, normally I know what to say when we get here. There's so much going on with Kansas sports, whether it's football, basketball, anything else that. Uh, it just seems obvious there's something that we possibly couldn't have fit in this 30-minute show. And obviously, uh, it's a different reality now. That's something many of you are confronting. You're confronting that very same thing. Just there aren't sports on. And sports are such a great way to cope and heal and come together and, and experience things. And I know that's hard for a lot of you. You know, we talked about, you know, maybe feel the people we're feeling bad for. And, you know, obviously I'm thinking about, you know, even the people in the fan base who are just looking for a distraction. I'm thinking about the players, guys like Devon Dotson. Uh, who tweeted nightmare when things started getting canceled. Uh, I'm thinking about the seniors, about players who returned from injury. Uh, there is a player at Penn State who was seven points away from setting his school's career scoring record. He won't get the chance to do it. So I know it's a tough time for a lot of people. Just wanted to say thank you for sticking with us. And I hope for a couple of minutes we made you chuckle or smile at something before you rolled your eyes and said, wow, Fitz really isn't that funny. No, he's not. He's not funny at all. You know, what does a person with stage 4 cancer do at a time like this? Well, he sits at home. I'm going to do some podcasts, and I'll probably, Scott, just roll around on the 750 rolls of toilet paper that I currently have in my house. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. They're really soft when you make a big mountain out of them. Is that why? That, that's where all the toilet paper is yeah, going. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's been a great season. I love doing the show with Scott. I don't miss Tom Keegan at all. I don't. I will talk to him in the near future, and I'll tell him that. I don't miss you, Tom. That's it for this week's edition and this season of The Drive. Keep checking us out on social media. I'm not funny there either. <laughs> With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.